Micah chapter 7. Woe is me. We'll start off very good. For I am as when they have gathered the summer fruits, as great gleanings of the vintage. And this would be a happy time. This would be a joyful time. They're gathering the crops. They're, they're making uh, the, the wine. It's feasting. I am as when. There is no cluster to eat. There's plants, but no fruit. My soul desires the first right fruit. There's nothing. He wants something, but there is nothing. There's crops, but nothing of them. Famine. No growth. No food. The good man is perished out of the earth. He's saddened because there's no one there who wants to get right. There's no one to do the work. And there will be a shortage of men, especially Jewish men, in the tribulation period. And there is none upright among men. So the good man is gone. The upright men are gone. And we're heading to that right now. There are good people. There are people who love the Lord and love the book and want to do right. But it ain't going to stay like that. And it ain't going to remain like that. Especially when the rapture of the church happens. Then literally this expression is all hell will break loose. It's going to. Under Satan. He's going to deceive the people. He's going to lie. They all lie and wait for blood. That's Proverbs 1. They want to kill. They want to steal. They want to get advantage. We've already read that a couple chapters back when they're covered in the fields and they're killing them. More than a couple of chapters back in Micah, we already studied that. Murdering people for the land. They hunt every man, his brother, Jewish, with a net. Now, they're not going around literally with a net, but it's like, you know, here's a net, you're trying to get a bird. They're out to catch you. They're out to get you. And you read that in Proverbs chapter 1. Come join us while we go get this guy, kill him, and we'll take his spoil. And then when you read that chapter, it comes to their own destruction. It comes to their own death. They get no glory. They get no blessings. That they may do evil with both hands earnestly. It's not just one handed. It's both hands. The prince, the prince asketh. And the judge asketh. For reward. Bribery. Just come on out. I want money. Give me money. What will you what will you give me? And the great man that would be somebody important. He utters his mischievous de desire. Remember we, we already read in Micah, you know, they woe unto them to devise things upon their dreams in their bed, and to them that do it in the morning, because they have the power. But here's a guy, you know, he's he's telling all that, that's your movies, adultery, lies, theft, stealing, covetousness, all his desire, all his dreams, he's telling them. He's not ashamed. There's no shame. And that is dying in America. These people, the way they dress and the way they act, there's no shame. There's no conscience. So they wrap it up. You know, every expression, wrap it up. They're going to come to an end. Their deeds will be judged by God. The best of them, if you want to call the best of them, what they think is best, is as a briar. The most upright, if you want to call it upright, upright amongst them, is sharper than a thorn hedge. They prick people. 
they hurt people. It hurts them. It gets stuck. Thorns are what they put upon the crown of Jesus' head. Thorns is the result of sinning against what God told them to do. Thorns is not something you grow, hey, I'm going to expect something good. The Bible says these thorns are thrown into the fire and they'll pop. The day of thy watchmen and the day of visitation cometh. An army's coming. Now shall be their perplexity. Shall she not in a friend? Bible. Trust not in a friend in time of uh, perplexity, times of trouble. Don't. This would have been great for Germany during World War II for the Jews. The tribulation period. And if Christians ever come under the noose and under the guillotine and under the pressures of the government, you better watch out who you put your trust in. Put ye not confidence in a guide, he'll lead you astray. Man is capable, no matter who he is and what he is, he has a wicked heart. He is capable of doing all destruction to his fellow man. And yes, even someone who professes to be a Christian. You gotta be careful. And we're gonna read in a few few verses. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. That's your wife. Don't even talk to your wife. She may turn you in. It's a harsh thing for God to tell him. Especially in tribulation times, there's no food, there's no water unless you go to the Antichrist. Receive his mark or his name. Wouldn't it be just great to turn your child in? I'm reading a book right now. Is it one of the things? You know, a woman so gave two, two of her children just so she can get a case of beer. This side of Calvary. In America. I can get a job if I sell my family. I can kill my unborn, my unborn baby so I can have a life. For the son dishonoreth the father. Happens all the time. Why do you expect good from man when, when his nature is sin? His nature is re rebelling against God. His nature is he has a wicked heart. You know, outside of Calvary, in the, in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, what is man? God told you when he spoke, to, just before he spoke to Noah, there's violence in the land, there's violence in his heart, there's violence in his nature. I'm going to destroy them all. And there's still violence. And there's still wickedness. We got more ways of killing people today than they probably did have before Noah's time. We've got weapons that, hey, it don't kill just one person. You can wipe out entire cities and not entire country. And you don't even have to be there to do it. Just press a button. The daughter rises up against her mother. That's no respect. That's no respect for elders. That's no regard of who brought you into this world. A daughter is supposed to look up to her mother. She, her mother is supposed to teach her and guide her. And she's supposed to learn and, and get all her instructions from her mother. Instead, he rises up. The son dishonors the father. He's the old man. And children today don't even know who the father is. The daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. Sometimes they call them outlaws. There's a bitter value of in-laws. It's jokes. 
We're in that day and age. A men's enemies, plural, are the men of his own house. Sons, uncles, fathers, grandparents, and any other men that you can mention by family trait. That's a harsh thing to say. And more so you don't trust if they're not saved or they don't even believe in the Lord Jesus or they don't even adhere to the Bible. If they don't adhere to the Bible, you just better, all right, go ahead, get sunk. Get displaced. Get in trouble. Because the Bible says, therefore, I, Micah says, I will look unto the Lord. Get your eyes off man. He can't do nothing. How do people look upon man and not the Lord? Let's see. Let me think of some titles now. Rabbi, priest, prophet, pastor, teacher, instructor, physical th th therapist, doctor, psychiatrist, pharmacist. Can I keep going? You want me to keep going? Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. Get your eyes off people and get your eyes on the Lord. The Lord will never do you wrong. You know, I'm teaching the Bible. I'm capable of, of teaching you falseness. I can turn it. I can do ill. I can go back in the world. I don't want to, but I'm capable. I've got a free will nature. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on the book. When somebody preaches to you, open the book and check them. You know what the biggest thing you should do when you're listening to a preacher? And I've left the church because of this. When he's reading along, you're following with your eyeballs and what he reads doesn't match your King James Bible. What are you going to do? Stay there because it's a good place? Or are you going to say, Lord, he's not teaching your word. We need to go. You stay because it's a good place. you got your eyes on man and not the Lord. And there are people, I, I, I can name them. If a pastor would leave or die in that church, they will leave. Or just not go to that church at all anymore because he's not there. Hey, he's just my favorite preacher. I've got all his tapes and all his CDs. What about to the Lord? I will not, I've got several CDs and tapes with several different men. I've been told by the best, you know, go ahead and listen to. These men that don't have the right Bible, that you can learn. I don't even know. I, I will not listen to men who don't quote the Bible. Right. There's one tape, one set of tapes I do have where he's not King James, and it's all about evolution. And what he does, he teaches the scientific facts. He's the only one I, I know that can put it in easy, sustainable evolution for dummies for me. But other than that, I, I don't, I will, as soon as I figure it's the wrong Bible, then you got the wrong God. I will wait for the for the God of my salvation. Patience will not take the mark. You know how hard that's going to be? You're a Jewish woman. You got a baby on your breast. That baby starts breaking out with a disease. You walk into the emergency room. What are you going to do? We ain't going to treat that baby unless you receive the mark. Better wait on the Lord. 
Same thing it was in World War II, I, I can imagine. Same thing with Babylon coming. Same thing with uh, the Syrians coming. You know, God, God told me, he said, listen, go to Babylon. Go. They didn't listen. You know what ended up after Babylon came the third time and destroyed? Jews got to stay in the land. Jeremiah got to stay in the land until he was kidnapped. But he got to stay in the land. Wait on the Lord. Some stayed. Daniel waited on the Lord and looked to the Lord. Shadrach, Meshach, and Inigo waited on the Lord and looked to the Lord. They told that king, listen, whether we, we're not going to obey your God and you. And whatever God does to us, so be it. My God will hear me. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. Now this would be the United Nations for the Jews. This would be the Middle East. This would be the media. This may be your president. This is Edom. People are rejoicing because you're falling. You ever had anybody? I, I don't think I've ever had anybody in my life like that. When you were at your worst, they were they were glad and happy. Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, see God's not going to stop him from falling. I'm God's person. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I shouldn't fall. Micah said, "When I fall, why didn't the Lord pick me up?" I shall arise when I sit in darkness. Oh, wait, well, there's going to be no darkness. I'm a Christian. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be light unto me. Listen, just because you're a born-again Bible-believing Christian doesn't mean you're not going to get trouble. Get yourself a computer. You're going to get a lot of trouble. Many troubles on a computer. Get yourself an automobile. You're going to have many troubles. Have children. You're going to have many troubles. You're going to have those moments in a hospital room. You're going to have those moments that, you know, it's only going to be prayer. And nothing else. Live life and you're going to have time. You know what? It has to be God because there's nothing else that can be done. And then live right. And all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Being or getting saved does not stop the problems on this planet. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. Look at that. I am a sinner and I'm going to get my just desserts. I'm going to get punished by God and because it's my fault. It's not moms. Listen, you know, you can say because of, of Adam and Eve, what they did. Yeah, you can say that. And you would be justified to say it's Adam and Eve's fault. It is. That's a true statement. So what? What are you going to do about it? Griping and complaining ain't going to do it. Just walk up to the Lord and say, God, guess what? I'm a sinner. And I've sinned. Show me mercy and grace, but I know something's going to happen unless you're mercy. Until he plead my cause. That would be the Lord Jesus Christ standing at the right hand of the Father. And Satan comes up to accuse you. And Jesus is there. Listen, Father, it's under the blood. 1 John 1, 9. And execute judgment for me. You know, it doesn't say unto me. It says for me. Jesus Christ took our execution. Jesus Christ took our judgment, Isaiah 53. He was executed, wasn't he? Match that verse with Isaiah 53. Bruised. Our sorrows. He will bring forth to the light. Jesus said, I'm the light. 
John 1 speaks about the light. John 3 speaks about the light. You want light. It's not the power company. It's the one that has the power. And that light from Jesus Christ is free. You don't get a bill in the, month, in the mail. I shall behold his righteousness. Who said that? An Old Testament Jew named Micah, right? Romans 10, 1 through 4, 11, 23, 26. You know who God's righteousness is? There's Messiah, Jesus Christ. Micah knows he's going to die. Micah knows he ain't going to live forever. Who would want to? And Micah makes a statement, hey, verse 9 is all about the Lord Jesus Christ. And one day... I am going to see that righteousness, the Lord Jesus Christ. The same righteousness that Moses and Elijah saw. The same uh, righteousness that Peter, James, John, Andrew, Matthew, and the rest of the disciples walked and talked and touched. This is 710 10 years before Christ. Micah says, I'm going to see the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's where he said, well, how can you see God if God's a spirit right there? Then she, that's an interesting pronoun. That's a pronoun that doesn't work today. If that pronoun was today, it would be then it, because people don't know if they're he or she. She, female, opposite of, you got to say that today. I'm, I'm surprised you guys say, a she is a woman, she's a female, she's an opposite of a male, of a female identities. No matter what you think. That is my enemy shall see it. Why does he say she? Isn't Satan he? Aren't the armies of Babylon men? Aren't the armies of Assyria men? But I know a mountain. I know a woman that sits on a beast whose cup is golden and drinks the blood of the saints. I like that one. And shame shall cover her, which said unto me. Now, maybe this is a woman that did come up to Micah. But you can run this over to that woman in Revelation. Where is the Lord thy God? Have anybody ever asked you that? And you're witnessing, your service. Well, where is the Lord thy God? You got troubles. Where is the Lord? Where is your God? Why do you got the troubles? Why do you got that? Why do you? Where's your God? My eye shall behold her. I have no idea. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. That could be the nations. When Jesus Christ comes back, he speaks about that, that blood that goes up to the, to the, the horse's bridle. Verse 8, rejoice not against me, O my enemy. That enemy has become a she. Who is against Israel? Nations. Practically the entire Middle East. If not all the Middle East. It's against Israel. You take all the nations that's in Israel. Uh, the United Nations, everyone that is the head of the nation that they represent. And you were to take a towel and you say, listen, I, I got a question here. Yay or nay? Yes or no? Is your nation against Israel? Yes or no? What would you think would be the final outcome when you tally all the yeses and no? I would think no. No. you would find a majority of the United Nations is against this one person. 
Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel, the twelve tribes. In the day that thy walls are to be built, in that day shall the decree be far removed. In that day also he shall come even to thee from Assyria and from the fortified cities and from the fortress even to the river and from sea to sea and from mountain to mountain. This is Jerusalem. It's going to be a rebuilding in Jerusalem. Ezra, Nehemiah, there's also going to be a rebuilding of Jerusalem just before the Antichrist. Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doing. It's desolate today. It was desolate before Ezra and Nehemiah. Why is that land so yucky? Why is Israel in, in uh Jew, I mean, Jerusalem. Why does it look so dead? It's their fruit. It's because of their sin. You ever wonder why throughout all of America, America's got quite a bit of climate regions, from very ice cold in Alaska to very hot in Florida and Texas. But it's not really extreme hot. Except for the Death Valley. What is it about that one area of America? And it's far north of the equator that this one area is just wickedly hot. And produces nothing. For no reason. It's got to be a reason. I think it's sin. If you were to ask me, i say 65-70%. I would say something there was sin. Feed thy people with thy rod. Isaiah 59.10, Jeremiah 50.19. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, thy... The flock, John chapter 10, of thine heritage, which dwelt solitary in the wood. That's not history. They were in the wilderness. In the midst of Carmel, let them feed in Bashan and Gilead, as in the days of old, fruitful, multiply, blessings. According to the days of thy coming out of the land of Egypt, I'm trying to see the mark here in my eyes here. That'd be Psalm 78 12. Will I show on him marvelous things? You mean manna in the water? Psalms 23. Resting in the midst of turmoil. A table prepared in the wilderness. Satan chasing them. Beating them with a rod as correction. The nations shall see and be confounded at all their might. What is going on with them? Why on earth are they surviving? Ever ask yourself about Israel? How do you believe that there's a God? Israel. Everybody else has been wiped off the map. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. And their ears shall be deaf. They're not going to talk and they're not going to listen. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. Oh, I wonder who that is. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. Where the worm dieth not. I wonder who we're talking about, John 8, 44. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God. And shall fear because of thee, the Jews. 
There's coming a day when people are going to fear the Jews and they're going to fear God. Who is a God like unto thee? A marvelous God. That parted iniquity. You've got to be guilty to get a pardon. If you're not guilty, there's no pardon. So don't just say a prayer. You've got to walk up to God and on your knees and humble say, God, you know what? You're offering a pardon? I'm guilty. I'm so far guilty, I couldn't even tell you all my iniquities. And passes by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He's going to forgive one day all the sins of Israel. Who can do that? Israel can't look to uh, Saudi Arabia. They ain't going to do it. Can't look to uh, Molech. He's asking for their babies to be burned. You can't ask America. America wants the petroleum from the Middle East. He will. He retaineth not his anger forever. When does he have his anger for the Jews? The tribulation period. When he has Babylon destroy uh, Jerusalem. Because he delighteth in mercy. Israel survives because of mercy of God. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon him. Turn again. He's going to come back to those Jews and he's going to revive them. He's going to give them light. He's going to give them a new spirit. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. 1 John 1 9. And from that, there'll be no fishing. Don't go fishing for those sins. The deepest part of the sea, if you were talking about the ocean, would be the Pacific Ocean. And no man can go down that far without any apparatus. And there is no apparatus in BC 710. Beyond man's capability. So what God's saying, I'm going to throw it in the deepest part of the sea. And no man at this point, 710 BC, can get to it. How's that sound? Oh, we'll try to go find. Yeah, and God will give you a leaky tub or something, or pinch of holes, or give you helium. That will perform the truth to Jacob. And the, remember who Jacob was? His deeds, the character of Jacob, and the mercy to Abraham, which thou, oh, wait a minute. Abraham, Jacob. Abraham. It's not Ishmael. Ishmael didn't have Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Sorry, Ishmael. You got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Which thou hast sworn unto our fathers from the days of old. It's a covenant that God made with Abraham. That's why they're surviving. You know, God told Moses one day, he said, you know what? I'm angry with him. Oh, Lord, I know you are. I'm so angry with him, I'm going to wipe him totally out. But I made a covenant with Abraham. So I'm going to make a nation of you. God was going to wipe out the nation of Israel 99% and leave one man. And you know what? Moses talked him out of it. God could not wipe them all out totally 100% because then there would be nothing from Abraham. God can't be finished with that Jew totally. God cannot ever tell that Jew, I'm finished with you. I'm done with you. I've had it with you. Because he would have to call Abraham up and say, Abraham, I'm sorry. I'm your God, but I'm a liar. 
And our God never lies, is incapable, can't do, will not. It's impossible for God to lie, so he can't be done with a Jew. And that's how we close Micah. He can't be done with a Jew. Because he told Abraham, I won't be done with you. I got a covenant with you. I got a covenant with David. There's going to be a man that's going to sit on that throne forever. How can you say he's done with him? Unless you don't know what forever is. 